welcome, 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 welcome to WrestleCram. This is your boy, the host. What's the most? But humble. I do mean humble. The Nostra Novice, a.k.a. Derek, and I'm here, of course, on a Monday to give you the happy, healthy, humble fans, WWE Monday Night Raw. First and foremost, thank you so much for being a part of the show. If you're watching it today, you're watching it tomorrow, you're watching it next week, I truly do thank you. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my minds, I truly, truly, truly do thank you. Without you guys, it truly wouldn't be me. And I truly mean humble for a reason when I say it at the beginning of every single show. If you want to do anything else for me other than watching the show, thank you. Go ahead and hit the like button. If you like it, I'll like you back. How about that? Um, if you want to do anything else for me other than those two things, go ahead and hit the sub button. Hit the sub button if you have not subbed to me. Uh, we're on the road to monetization, so go ahead and do it for me. Be a part of the Derek or the D Nostra Novice. Uh, coat. How about that? Well, if you want to do anything else for me other than those things, not asking for a dime, a penny, not asking for a credit card number, go ahead and hit the notification bell. I do seven, seven core shows each and every week. Do this each and every week, you guys. So, um, right now there's nothing going on at the very moment, but I will say this at the end of this show, of course, you will find out, you will find out what, um, my two cent will be about. A lot of y'all probably already know what it's going to be about. I guarantee y'all already know what it's going to be about. Um, but let's let's go on to uh, Monday Night Raw. I will say this: Charlotte, North Carolina, was really. I don't know what the situation was over there, but man, it was that crowd was dead. That crowd was dead beyond dead. I don't know what more. <laughs> that the WWE could have done to make this show try to be uh, um, um, ingestible. How about that? Because the show wasn't good. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. And the crowd did not uh, 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 even try to give the energy back to the, the to the, uh, the 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 people that's in the ring, the promos, the video packages. Nothing, like absolutely nothing that these people did to pop. So at the beginning of the show and at the end of the show, nothing in the middle got pops. Like it was just really creepy how they just, uh, you could even look at the stands. Like everybody just sitting down. Was like, that's a good show. It's a good show. It's a good show. Like what? Like nothing was going on. The uh, Like it was, it was creepy to me. It was really creepy. I don't know. I, I, I'm so lost. I'm lost for words on what was going on in their head with with uh, with this. Also, I just want to let y'all know uh, my Astros will be playing night a day or well night one of the World Series on Friday. So um, Friday night SmackDown will be moved to FX One. Uh, if you don't know that, I just want to let y'all know that. Put that on your calendars that it will be on FX1 instead of, of course, um, um, Fox due to the fact of this is going to be night one of the World Series. I hate that. This is my job. I do this. So I will be watching SmackDown and Rampage. I will just get the play-by-play -play of the World Series, which I'm a huge fan of the World Series, but it is what it is. Go Astros. I, I see them. I will say this. My prediction is they're going to sweep the Phillies. They have not lost a game in the playoffs yet. Go Astros. But anyway, let's talk about the show. Um, Judgment Day comes out. Uh, I love that music. It's a great, great track. Whoever did it did a great job with that song. Um, so they get to the ring and Rhea Ripley says that... Um, Judgment Day does run Monday Night Raw, which is absolutely true. They do run Monday Night Raw. And uh, she says that Dominic is a moan. He's a moan. 
I was like, okay, cool. I got you. Rhea Ripley, you can step, you can stomp on me and make me a man any any day of the week. I promise you can do that. Do not mind Rhea Ripley. Have fun with my chest cavity or whatnot. Now I don't know what you're doing to Dominic to make him more man, but apparently you are doing something and keep going with it because I am loving Dominic's uh, Dominic Dominic Mysterio's um, new persona, his new character. It is great. Still need to work on his. Ori his own original taste of wrestling. I would love to see that, but we'll, we'll see what's going on. So, uh, after that, uh, we get Damian Priest. Damian Priest gets on the mic and says, all rise, like he always does. Like he's a bailiff in, like, you know, some judge show. All rise, you know, like, he should have, like, a freaking badge or something right there. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, so, they also... Give him his praises as well. And, of course, Dominic uh, gets on the mic in a flood of booze. A flood of booze. Like, oh, it was like a wind of booze just killing Dominic before he gets on the mic. And he says, uh, Judgment Day is, the only, is uh, the only good that believes in him. They were the only group that believed in him. And he beat AJ Styles clean. I was like, y you beat him clean? <laughs> you beat a probably a grand champion clean. Two-time world champion, by the way. Two-time world cha world champion. You beat him clean. No, you didn't. Rhea Ripley helped you, but you did win. Now, I, I will agree with you on that. Uh, Dominic also says that he is just built differently. I'm like, I'm like okay, cool. So now you're, you're, just, you're just bringing up music now. <laughs> and also, he says something. That he should have said when he uh, if he was on AEW because it would have got a better crowd reaction than Charlotte, North Carolina. I mean, goodness gracious, it was really bad. But you know, he says that he is the he is this generation's Eddie Guerrero, and uh, I mean, the crowd was just killing it. But he also says, well, Eddie Guerrero is that generation's Dominic Mysterio, which I thought was really good as well. So out comes, um, out comes the OC, and uh, AJ Styles tells Dominic to just shut up. You are not Eddie Guerrero, which is absolutely true. But um, he also uh, he says, um, uh, "You are the James Ellsworth of <laughs> of this generation." And Gallows uh, Gallows says, uh, "Johnny No Chin." <laughs> so. They, uh, so after that, um, they were saying that they, things are going, uh, is going to be, uh, we are going to pick off Judgment Day piece by piece by piece until we get to you. You're always hiding behind Judgment Day. And, of course, Vin gets on the mic again, and he continues to say, I'm the one that created Bullet Club. Uh, after I left Bullet Club... Y'all fed off of me. Y'all fed off of my name or whatnot. Well, I wouldn't say that because AJ Styles' uh, bullet code was pretty good. Uh, matter of fact, um, AJ Styles' bullet code was probably the most dominant out of all of them. Uh, Kenny Omega was more of the, of the comic bullet club. And, you know, the one they have now, I forgot who's the leader of that one. But that one's more serious than, than the one. But, I mean, Prince Devin was a powerful one. But um, it just seems like the one that AJ had was a little bit more dominant. Uh, so Carl Anderson um, gets on the mic and says, uh, enough with all this. Let me and you, Finn, we're going to go at it today right now. So the ref comes up. They do get uh, a match going. And when they got the match going, the crowd stops. It stops. It's no more. It's done. I was like, <laughs> this crowd is horrible. So, so Carl Anderson is literally working over the arm. I mean, it's a great storytelling. Working the arm, I mean, working the leg of um, of Prince Devin, which is Finn Balor. Working that leg a lot. We get a beautiful, beautiful back suplex. Snap back suplex by Carl Anderson. Um, and we were attempting to get a, a coup de gras that didn't happen, but 
what happened on the outside of the ring was the best. Not even inside the ring, and we got nothing. So, uh, Anderson was working, uh, so we got a uh, Dominic attempts to get on the ring to distract the ref. AJ grabs Dominic, throws him off. Uh, we get Damian Priest grabbing AJ, throwing him onto the commentator's uh, table. Gallows attacks Damian Priest, eliminating him. Rhea Ripley suplexes Gallows onto the ground. After that, Rhea Ripley gives uh, Anderson a low blow for uh, for Finn Balor to pin and win the match. Lots of moving uh, parts, all right, whatnot, but it was really, really good, and it made perfect sense toward the ground jewel. Uh, so after that, we got a video package with the Miz uh, attacking Dexter Loomis uh, before the match. Of course, if you don't know what happened. Uh, the Miz did not want to face Dexter Loomis, and um, he attacked him with a chair. Now, uh, Dirt Sheets are saying that he is working injured. So, but he must not be working injured that bad due to the fact that, you know, he is still wrestling to, uh, to the highest extent. Uh, so, after that, Johnny Gargano and The Miz are backstage, and he's just saying that, you know, uh, I have this whistle I'm going to blow, uh, I'm going to blow the whistle on you. Blow the whistle on you. He's a whistleblower. And he's just trying to let him know that, you know, he just wants him to tell the truth. And Dexter Loomis will literally leave him alone. So he was like, uh, we'll, we'll find out what's going on with that. So we get Miz TV. And Miz TV, where Miz is telling them, Apparently, he is sorry for not knowing where Tommaso Ciampa is. And what he thinks that Dexter Loomis is upset about is that he chose Tommaso Ciampa to be under his wing instead of Dexter Loomis. Now, here's the thing. Johnny Gargano comes out because The Miz is literally continuously saying that he does not know where Tommaso Chump is. He's been missing for weeks. He's been missing almost a month now, I think. And uh, Johnny Gargano comes out, he says, well, uh, the reason why he's not here is because he's injured. I just text him, he's okay. Now, what we need to do is you need to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, because what you're saying, that's not the truth. You're a compulsive liar. So, they kept saying the truth, like they said Beetlejuice a million freaking times, and out comes our truth who I haven't seen since they disposed of the 24-7, the 24-7 division, which was a godsend, got rid of that crap. Thank you so much for getting rid of that division. Um, And he gets on the mic, apparently he is a a Charlotte, North Carolina native, and he was upset because the Miz was talking about the the disgusting cuisines in Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been to Charlotte, North Carolina. I enjoy Charlotte, North Carolina, but I only ate like Pizza Hut there. So I had that never. I went to a jazz concert, uh, uh, festival. It was really fun. I'm a huge jazz fan, so. I went to like uh, me and my uh, my coworkers. We all went to a jazz festival in um, North Carolina. A great, beautiful, beautiful city. And when I tell you, it is beautiful weather out there in North Carolina, hands down. Um, so, but he was talking about mac and cheese, and he said the mac and cheese here is really, really good. Uh, so apparently, he got insulted behind them talking about the food being bad out there. So, he challenges Miz to a fight, to a match. Now, this is where, you know, it gets kind of offset, and we don't know if this is true or not that Miz is um, injured. But he didn't pull out all of the stops when it came to his wrestling. So, it looks like he probably is a little injured uh, due to the fact. Uh, but we do get a video promo before the match uh, where... No, 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 no. Let me take that back. We do get the match first. Um, and 
the men is uh, is attempting to do the of course the uh, skull crushing finale, but he looks all the way to the left or to the right, and he sees a hood with a person with those really nice gloves on, and of course it's not Dexter Loomis, it's actually Johnny Gargano, but it gives the opportunity for uh, r truth to roll. Uh, the Miz up and win the match. Uh, so he's upset. Uh, the Miz is upset because it was Johnny Gargano and it was not Dex Loomis. Dex Loomis wasn't even on the show today, which is a bummer. So uh, after that, we get a Candice LeRae promo where she's just happy to be back. And, you know, just just basic. I'm happy to, I'm happy to be here. If you ever seen Coming to America, I'm happy to be here. That's what it was. You know, just raw, raw, I'm here. Thank goodness Damage Control comes in. They tell the young lady to leave. Uh, Bailey takes over the uh, the uh, interview, and she's saying that all of these women we have destroyed, all of these women are on the shelf, and what do you think we're going to do to you? Dennis LeRae says, well, you, uh, uh, EO Sky, you're crazy, you're untrustworthy. Dakota Kai, you suck. And Bailey, you still do not have the title. Bad words coming from three against one. So they knock over the, uh, the, um, the camera and they attack, of course, Candice LeRae. Uh, after that, we get uh, Elias and Riddle. And Riddle still has no stupid bongos. Uh, y'all don't have anything to do. Y'all don't have anything to, to, that, that can work with Riddle. I mean, please. So, Elias is just telling him that when I am in music mode, I am in music mode. I don't like to be interrupted. If you, I'm trying to be nice to you. But if you interrupt me again, you're not going to get nice Elias. I hate face Elias. Bring back heel Elias. Uh, so after that, we get the Alpha Academy. Uh, they talk. They say that uh, that what are y'all a group? Uh, you blink one eighty shush. Uh, like eh, 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 eh. Mm. yeah. But anyway, so um, they uh, Elias says I'm getting tired of being interrupted. You've interrupted me. Now I want to face um, Chad Gable. When I tell you, and I keep saying this over and over and over and over again, Chad Gable is so good in the ring. He can make Boo Boo look like gold. And this match that he had was a giant turd. I don't know if Elias has, just has not been in the ring that, that I mean, or Ezekiel who has not been in the ring that, that much. But man, this match was pew. But we'll talk about it later. Right now we have uh, Austin uh, Theory versus Mystical Ali. Pretty decent match. I enjoyed this match. This match is probably the match of the night. If it wasn't for the shenanigans from Seth Rollins. Um, so, uh, Seth, uh, before the match even starts, Seth comes out. He gets on the commentator desk. And he's saying that, no, he is still going to have to prove to him that he is capable of being... Uh, you know, number one contendership material. They're doing the exact same storyline when Austin Theory had the belt and they were going against The Miz. This is the same exact storyline. What is it that y'all are shitting on Mr. Fali about? This is getting old. I mean, look, go back and check that uh, this is the exact copy and paste. Exact copy and paste. So, um... Miserable was about to do that beautiful uh, uh, 450 frog splash. Um, Seth gets uh, into the ref where um, Theory gets an opportunity to kick his legs underneath him. He puts him in the A-Town down for Austin Theory to actually win a match. You're supposed to be the future. You actually won a match. Congratulations. I am still lost on why were you on the last... Why was you on the Go Home episode of... NXT, you did not inform us why you were on the go home show of NXT. Can somebody tell me why he was on the go home show 
than NXT. Anybody, comments, let me know why he was on the go home show at NXT. Anyway, I digress. So we get um, Seth, Seth get back, yeah, he gets back in the ring. He attacks, he throws him into the audience where there is still no enthusiasm. It was so dead in that in that arena. So, um, Ali looks like he is completely destroyed. So he gets back on there. Um, Seth gets out of the uh, uh, the audience. He walks up the sta the stage, and Ali comes from out of nowhere and attacks um, Seth Rollins, and uh, they just start going at it again. Mesfa gets the upper hand, and we get about two or three referees to try to break it up. But you really didn't have to do that because uh, Seth was already almost out inside of the, the catering area anyway. So that's what happened with that. Uh, after that, we get The Miz and Johnny. Uh, Johnny is trying to get to his wife because she was attacked by, of course, damage control. But she, but he runs into the Miz. The Miz is still mad over what happened uh, with him. He's like, oh, "Yeah, I, I feel you. I'm sorry. I gotta go see what's going on with my wife." So he runs into JBL and Baron Corbin, and he's saying that you, what you did to the Miz was wrong. That dude is a legend. He's gonna be a generational all star. He is gonna be the top of the card when it comes to the uh, Hall of Fame. He said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He said, um, let me introduce myself. My name is Johnny Wrestling. So he shakes JBL's hand. He said, uh, do you already know who I am, uh, bearing, is it Corbin, Constable, King? I mean, you change your name every week. What is it today? Uh, so he's making fun of him. You know, Johnny Gargano's, um, his, his character is just fun and joking. I love it. I don't know what people don't like about Johnny Gargano. I love Johnny Gargano. Uh, so, JBL challenges, of course, him to a match between him. I mean, well, not him, but uh, Corbin and him, uh, uh, and Johnny Gargano, he does accept. Um, but we don't get the ending of how is his wife doing. And I was thinking to myself, uh, Seth never went to Becky when it came to that. Uh, also, uh, Montez Ford never comes to the aid of his wife, which is Bianca Belair. Why did they put that angle in where he ran and like, let me go see my wife. Let me go. Oh, I got the way. I got to go find more. Like, what? So you stopped what you were doing to wrestle uh, JBL. I mean, not JBL, uh, Baron Corbin. That's not making any sense. Like, the, that that wasn't making any sense. That didn't make any, any sense. Like, I don't understand the concept of you looking for your wife and somebody now gets in your face and now I have to wrestle. You gotta make sense or whatnot. And I wasn't feeling that at all. Uh, so after that, we get uh, Omos versus four men this go around and Omos wins. Uh, no Braun Strowman this go around. Anyway, after that, we get Elias and Chad Gable. Whoa, what a shit, <laughs> what a shit show. Man, this was bad. This was really bad. Chad tried his hardest to keep this match going, but this match was bad. It was horrible. Uh, we got some paint, of course, on Elias on his uh, uh, forehead, but they tried their hardest to do. Well, Elias, I don't know if he's just rusty in the ring, but, man, that was bad. Uh, we get a drift away, uh, and, and Elias does win. Otis gets in the ring, attacks Elias, uh, out comes... Out comes, of course, the bro uh, with Riddle. Riddle attacks both um, Chad Gable and Otis, uh, try, uh, helping, of course, uh, Elias. I guarantee next week they will have a tag team match between them and the Alpha Academy. I hate that they job Alpha Academy out to people now. It is sucks because they are really good. But if, like I said, if Chad, if, if Chad likes it, if he's getting paid absorbent amounts of money, then I, I can't be mad at him for that. Uh, after that, we get the OC uh, and um, AJ Styles, and they are uh, Gallows and Anderson. Uh, both got hit in the nuts, and now 
they're like, well, we know Rhea Ripley is a problem. So now they need to, apparently they're going to try to find a female to take care of Rhea Ripley. After that, JBL uh, launches another promo, uh, crapping on um, the North Carolina, uh, the Panthers. He uh, yeah, crapped on the Panthers, crapped on Jordan. He crapped on a lot of stuff in, in Charlotte. And he brought out, of course, Baron Corbin, uh, along with Johnny Gargano. This match was long for no reason. Like, it was just long. It was just long, move, 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 rest, 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 move, move, move. It, it made no sense how long this match was. So, uh, toward the end of the match, Johnny Gargano gets on the top of the table. He grabs JBL's um, um, hat or uh, his uh, the 10-gallon hat, puts it on, starts dancing, bang, 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 bang. And he was going to give it back to him, but he, he <laughs> faked him out, put it back on his head, uh, does a beautiful DDT on to Baron Corbin, throwing him back in the ring. He was about to do that other beautiful DDT that he does, uh, but JBL does clip his legs, grabs his hat. We get a beautiful end of days, and Baron Corbin wins. Baron Corbin is literally undefeated right now on the main roster on Raw. Uh, after that, we get a Bianca Belair promo where she's talking about all of her friends are gone. Now this is personal, and now it's time. And now it's payback. So I'm not even doing this for myself. I'm doing this for everybody in the locker room because they t the the damage control needs to be. They truly need to be taken care of. So, uh, after that, we get a uh, the Miz runs uh, uh, runs into, of course, Johnny Gargano one more time. He gets a uh, uh, the Miz and Maurice gives Johnny Gargano a get well soon card for his wife Candice LeRae, and he was like, um, "Where? What? There should be money in here. Like you're rich, uh, what not?" So he, but he does tell uh, the Miz tells Johnny Gargano, "Hey." Uh, you've been through a lot today. I've been through a lot today. Let's all sit down. Let's hash it out. Let's be cool. Let's be gentlemen. And uh, what uh, Johnny says, no, we're not. You need to tell the truth or I'm going to tell the truth next week. Thank you for ending this because this is getting really old when you add Johnny Gargano, a third person to this story. Now we kind of starting to get the picture of what is going on. Hopefully we get 100% Miz eventually. So we can get a Miz versus Dexter Lewis match. Um, after that, we get a just a brief history of Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar. They will be facing each other on um, um, Crown Jewel, um, and I think next week I will be record. I will be watching that. I won't do it right after because I think it's on a Wednesday or a Tuesday or something like that. Some weird odd day. I'll watch it, and then I'll give a review on it. Um, so, uh, after that, we get the uh, Bailey versus Bianca Belair match. Wow. <laughs> this match was not even close to the match, they, that, that ladder match that they had for the women's title. Now, this match is not for the women's title, but this match was not good. This was a horrible main event. With too much going on at the same time. Now, uh, we got a where uh, EO Sky and Dakota Kai, they clear the table for uh, Bailey to do a powerbomb or some type of, of, um, some type of move to break the table. Uh, instead of her trying to do it, we got Bianca Belair who does a powerbomb on the uh, table, didn't break, picks her back up, does a powerbomb onto the uh, the pole, the ring pole, uh, rolling, throwing her back in the ring. We get uh, Eel Sky, Dakota Kai, uh, both attacking um, both attacking her. Um, and out of nowhere, we get some lady uh, giving a dive on damage control and the ref, because the ref was about to throw Dakota Kai and Eel Sky out. But before he could do that, some mystery lady attacked, did a dive on all three people, knocking out, of course, the referee. 
Uh, so we get a beautiful KOD by, um, of course, um, Bianca Belair. She tries to pin. She did. She could not pin uh, due to the fact that there's no ref. So the the mystery person comes out and attacks uh, both Bailey and um, Bianca Belair. Uh, the mystery girl now we know is Nikki Cross, not Nikki, almost a superhero. Does a really nice uh, uh, fall away suplex and p pulls Bailey on top of Bianca. Another ref comes in, tags, and win. Uh, we get a winner, which is Bailey. Bailey, I'm thinking now she's part of Damage Control. That wasn't the case because Bailey attacks. I mean, because uh, Nikki attacks Bailey, and now she's just you know she's back to the crazy loose cannon, uh, Nikki Cross, which I I mean it runs and fades into obscurity after that. It fades the black out of that. Wow. Just like I said, I didn't understand the show. It seemed like the show was just made up as it went to this week. And I was like, what? After all the stuff we had, this show is the one that's like... Okay, so, um, y'all, so let's talk about my two cents. Because I'm done with that garbage fire of a raw. Uh, so let's talk about my two cents. Now we all know that uh, apparently Tony Khan and upper management are trying to negotiate the terms of the buyout. Now the buyout will consist. Now the reason why it's not over with yet is due to the fact of the non compete clause. Now it seems like we're going to get him in another federation. We don't know which one it is, but chances are it may be the WWE because they are the ones that hold all of the gold. Gold as in money. Now, if this does happen, if this truly is in the works, I have a suggestion on why CM Punk should go to WWE. Hands down, he should go to WWE if AEW does not want to keep him. Y'all, like, share, and subscribe. I love y'all so much. Send it to people like, to the people you don't like. I love y'all so much. The best is truly yet to come. But until next time, you guys, love, peace, and of course, of course, of course, Wrestling.